uh, good afternoon, everyone, and good evening from Brazil. Uh, my name is Fernanda, and I'm, I'm research associate of the Young Science Program this summer. And I'm going to present my work, RNA Mineral Interactions and its Implication for the Origin of Life, under the supervision of Dr. Milena Popovic. And, the, and that was done together with my team, Sylvia and Ruth, this summer. Uh, so, as might all of you already know, the origin of life is an extensive field in astrobiology, and there are plenty of sub areas to study in this context, but today uh, we are focusing on the RNA molecule. Uh, so, here we have both the DNA and RNA molecules, and as we can see, they have some differences in special related to their nuclear bases. And the DNA molecule is composed by guanine, cytosine, adenine, and thymine. And uh, while RNA just differs in the uracil base instead of thymine. And as you probably know, uh, the DNA is formed by a double strand uh, that is also called double helix. But the RNA molecule just has one strand that is called a single strand. And uh, when we look here in this picture, we can see that uh, they are very similar, but the DNA is uh, believed to have originated after the RNA molecule because the RNA is a much more simpler uh, structure. So uh, in life in general, the RNA is responsible for the delivery of genetic information, allowing the formation of proteins and other metabolism related function. But other than that, uh, RNAs are special for their capacity to catalyze reactions and still be capable of storing information just like DNA. And because of that, uh, scientists hypothesize it about the RNA world in the or the earth. Uh, and with that in mind, the RNA is believed to be one of the earliest molecules that, that can have uh, both a genetic and a catalytic catalytic function. Uh, so uh, from monomers, that is a single building block inside a bigger sequence called polymer, this molecule can form oligomers or multiple building blocks that can form a uh, fold on itself to create uh, active catalytic sites. And uh, from this, uh, we can go back to the RNA world hypothesis that says that life may have started with RNA molecules and more specifically protocells containing functional or catalytic RNAs. And alongside the RNA cell folding capacity, there are studies that correlate some fo uh, folding events to the interaction with the specific minerals. And for instance, it is known that the mineral surfaces play a role in the concentration, protection, and chemical transformation of biopolymers, such as RNA. And also in these uh, scenarios, the interaction of minerals with RNA folding patterns is expected to change the evolutionary pathways. Uh, and lastly, like we were discussing before, uh, the interactions uh, between minerals and, and organic molecules might have played a role in the emergence of life on Earth and even on other planets. Uh, in previous uh, studies shows that interactions between mineral and nucleic acids are an evidence of a greater role of R for RNA in the early life. So uh, RNA molecules can re uh, remain catalytically active in the presence of some clay minerals and facilitate the formation of monomers and support the formation of RNA encapsulating vesicles. So, uh, we can notice that the interaction between organic molecules and mineral, minerals can play a huge role in the emergence of life. So it is really important to address the role of inorganic structures, such as minerals, when we try to comprehend the processes involved in the origin and evolution of, of life on Earth. And uh, so our main motivation is that, as far as we know, there are no studies about RNA mineral interactions correlating with sequence patterns. Therefore, we, we aim to try to identify sequence bias in biological RNAs that interacts with minerals, aiming to detect sequence enrichment in RNA population and correlate the prevalence of base pairs, sequence, or structures with the mineral interaction. Uh, and this first uh, wet lab pad part here, uh, the methodology uh, was done by Dr. Milena Popovic's group uh, and as aims, but it is important to introduce this to you to contextualize our work. So. For the data set formation, RNA libraries were used to, to the interaction, uh, to test the interaction between RNA and mineral. Uh, but uh, I don't know how many of you are familiar with bioinformatics. So uh, first, uh, do you know uh, what is uh, an RNA library? Because uh, we can say that it is a collection of randomic sequences of RNA. And once uh, you have this library, you can use to do experiments and then you can, you can have uh, it sequenced. 
So uh, we had the control libraries, and besides this, we have the, the supernatus and the precipitated RNA. And so here we show the tests with the addition of nickel sulfide represented here by NIS and iron sulfide that is uh, the FES. And in both cases, uh, the supernatus and precipitated RNA were collected and sequenced using the Illumina platform. Uh, and before we keep uh, talking about the computational methods, uh, it, it's important to understand the concept of k-mers. Uh, so uh, the k-mers are words or substrings with variable lengths contained inside a bigger or original sequence. And for example, on this image, we can see uh, in the color yellow, uh, the original DNA sequence, and in blue, all the k-mers of the sequence that uh, in this case are the formers, the, that makes up the, the whole original sequence. So uh, in these projects, we use this concept to try to identify specific sequences stored inside bigger sequences that can interact with minerals. Uh, and and uh, from the sequence results, the FASTQ files were generated. And first, the, uh, the files were trimmed and filtered by quality of the sequence processes. And then uh, all the files were converted to FASTA using the, the two SEXTK. And uh, from the FASTA files, uh, from the FASTA, uh, the files analysis using the, the software Telomer were performance aiming the identification of all the camera sequences in each, in each data set. And uh, then after that, uh, now using Python, all the cameras were identified using the uh, uh, and were filtered uh, by abundance and, and mapped against its original sequence. And the final results were compared, uh, aiming the identification of patterns in the sequence. Uh, and next, we are planning to find exclusive cameras to exclusive conditions so that we can predict their folding patterns and try to correlate to the capacity of the mineral interaction. Uh, so now uh, we are going to talk about the, the results we have so far. Uh, and in this result, we can see that all the samples start with the with equal raw sequence composition, uh, confirming that before any manipulation, all, all samples started as similar as possible. And this plot was generated using the raw and not processed in telomere fast A files. Uh, and here we can see the frequency pattern of k uh, from the four preliminary samples. It is clear uh, that the overall k abundance is very different bet between uh, the precipitated NIS1 and the supernatant, that is the NIS0. Uh, and how, uh, however, some k are present in all the four samples, but with different abundance, uh, while the other, uh, other seems to be exclusive to one sample. And then uh, this may be related to the interactions to the mineral used. Uh, and uh, also the NIS1 samples uh, that were sequenced from the precipitated material showed higher frequency of exclusive cameras, indicating that those sequences might be bound to interact in precipitate. Uh, so uh, the points, uh, also the points observer uh, closest to each other may be sequences that, uh, that do not have any type of interaction with minerals and therefore are more evenly distributed in all four samples. And uh, also, uh, it is interesting to observe that the supernated samples that is uh, represented by NIS0 don't have uh, any exclusive cameras. Uh, then uh, here we can observe the raw camera occurrence for each sample. And it is clear that some of the high abundance sequences are exclusive to sample sequences from the precipitated material, which are uh, the green and the red bars. And just like in the figure before, uh, there might be uh, some correlation between the, the camera sequence and its interaction with the, the nickel, nickel sulfide mineral. Uh, and here we can also uh, better observe what was addressed in the figure before. Uh, the precipitated samples have many exclusive cameras that may be correlated to the interaction with the mineral also. Uh, so uh, going forward, we still have a lot uh, of questions to be answered uh, in this work, but uh, in this fall, we are planning to apply uh, this pipeline of analysis of more sequences, in special sequences from the iron sulfide samples. And uh, then we are planning to get all the significant cameras from all, from all the samples, which is the precipitated, the supernatant, and the control samples. Uh, then to predict the, their folding structures and try to correlate sequence, folding, and the capacity to interacts with both passes material. So briefly, we're trying to follow uh, four main steps. Uh, 
correlate uh, nucleotide uh, sequences of RNA mineral interactions, identify uh, different nucleotide sequences for different mineral the precipitated samples. That is, for example, assessing the differential interaction with iron sulfide and nickel sulfide, uh, and to, to try to correlate uh, RNA folding with specific mineral interaction. And then uh, finally cluster all the cameras for pattern identification. Uh, and finally, I'd like to thank uh, all of you that watched my presentation, mainly to Dr. Milena and my team, Sylvia and Ruth, and of course, Dr. Graham, Sam, Joy, and Jacob, and all of the Blue Marble Space team that were responsible for the Young Science Program. It's a pleasure to be presenting to you. Thank you. Awesome. Wonderful job, Fernanda. Uh, does anyone have any questions for Fernanda? You can ask in the chat or go ahead and raise your hand that I can call on you. I see some claps coming in. I see a question from Sanjoy right away. Amanda, thank you uh, so much for a very interesting presentation. I was wondering, you, you're mentioning that you're uh, working with clays, but you're not, you didn't specify which kind of clays, um, it's such a broad family of minerals. I'm curious what clays have you tried and also whether the mineral and um, oligomer uh, interactions can be affected by environmental conditions, salinity or pH or temperature and so on. Okay, I, I uh, really don't know uh, which mineral we are working on <laughs> right now because uh, we, uh, well, uh, I saw in some articles from Dr. Milena that uh, she was using Montmorillonil Nil uh, clay minerals, uh, but uh, I don't know to, uh, about uh, how, uh, what is the mineral we are, we are working right now. Uh, because uh, we we had some some issues <laughs> in our work that we started uh, a few few weeks later. So uh, we still are, are are going to continue working on these projects <laughs> for a little uh, 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 little time. <laughs> so but, uh, just, um... asking the hi, Dr. Milena. <laughs> oh hi, sorry, I, I don't mean to interrupt. So, so just nickel sulfide and iron sulfide, right? Yes. For the, those with the precipitate. Yes, yes. but I, I was thinking about a name for them. I don't know, you just call them uh, nickel sulfide and iron sulfide. Okay, are you working with pyrite? Uh, no, it would be just, just those two, just the nickel sulfide and iron sulfide precipitates. Right, so pyrite, yes. Okay. Uh, for... Thank okay. you. Can I ask a, a, a slightly different question and, and feel free to say that you have no idea um, because I have no idea. I was asked a few years ago, many years ago by a researcher in the RNA world uh, kind of uh, realm um, as a geologist, what would I look for uh, to actually find any evidence of the RNA world? Because right now all we have is speculation that, that there was an RNA world. We have no evidence that there was an RNA world. Um, do you know what you might look for to find evidence of an RNA world? Uh, <laughs> it's a difficult question. I know it is a hard uh, the, uh, But you're talking about uh, here on Earth or, or on other planets? Here on Earth? On Earth? Yeah, here, here on Earth or say, say it's happening somewhere else too. That's also a good question. What would you look for? Uh, I don't know. I think that I, I would look uh, in uh, deep sea hydrothermal vents <laughs> and uh, uh, some uh, of these ex extreme environments, because I remember uh, that uh, the the time that life began on Earth, uh, this that's all I can I didn't think I can think now uh, is uh, we didn't have uh, uh, like uh, the conditions we have nowadays. So uh, I will look for some places that uh, uh, have uh, some kind of I don't know uh, pres preserved conserved. Uh, environments like uh, even a hydrothermal events or or I don't I don't remember now but uh, acid uh, more acid events hypersaline lakes I don't know because I, I I I'm working with the origin of life uh, for the first time so I really really don't have a lot of ideas I just know that uh, the, the most uh, the places that we uh, most of the scientists uh, try to look for this uh, 
this kind of, of research is uh, I, all of, I, I can think about is the hydrothermal vents because uh, we have here uh, my slide <laughs> even a picture that uh, uh, have a vesicle forming around the, the RNA molecule. So this is all that I, I can think about. 